Boy, just be yourself. If people don't like you, if you're being yourself, fuck them. Yeah. Big Los, welcome to another episode of The Noise. Unfortunately, Kev is not here with me because I'm all the way in Believe Land, out here visiting family, and it's uh, it's been great since I've been back home, and I love it. But in his absence, I have another professional, another radio mogul, if you will, stepping in to uh, bring his talents and and bless the noise. Y'all know him as the kingpin, but it is my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, bro? What's going on, sir? I'm taking my talents to beat. Yes. Yes, sir. Welcome. Welcome back, actually. You're, this is your third yes, time on the show. Yes, my third time being on the show. Right. We can't, it's some cast, man. We were trying to get on one time, <laughs> and it's been all kind of issues dealing with that, but we appreciate you coming back. So shout out to everybody, uh, all the listeners of The Noise. I appreciate y'all. Yes, Welcome sir. Yes, sir. Back. And of course, you know, Kev is still a part of this, you know, obviously, but um, with everything that was going on with him being in the hospital and... Now he's just out and recovering. He's just trying oh, to get word, himself he's good. right. Yeah, he's better. He's definitely better. Uh, I think they're planning uh, surgery with his back right now. Okay. And um, I saw, yeah, he's been sitting out dealing it's with no that. excuse. Should have brought his ass to Cleveland. Hey, you know, he should have. <laughs> and he even told me, he was like, you know, I, I should have just, I should have come out there with you because it would have been all kind of, all kind of issues if he had he came right, out to the right. city. <laughs> like I, I was, I was going to be a compassionate for a little bit and then I'm like, nah, forget that. No, nah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, I'm, trying, I'm the same way. I, I talk the most shit about him when he's in the hospital. I'm like, hey, yo, geriatric fuck. Like, get, get your ass up and do something. Get your old ass. Right. Man. But yeah, man. Um, again, I definitely appreciate you stepping in. No doubt. No and doubt. I also appreciate, you know, letting me use your facilities, brother. Yes, how, you, how, how you like the dig, Listen, sir? This, this shit is official. Thank you, sir. Thank I'm you, I'm like, okay, you know, I got, I, I, I got, you know, majority of this equipment, but I'm just like, this, this area. I'm like, okay. Thank All you. right, well, you know. Obviously, I got some work to do, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to make my way there. So uh, before we get into the show, how, how are you, sir? What's, what's, what's new with FCB? Oh, man, it's everything is 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 popping, man. Mm-hmm. We got the outlaws. Everything's going well uh, with, with them. Uh, we got a new show popping, a Political Refugee. Uh, with Mary Beth Glenn. She was on uh, she's been on MSNBC, CNN. You know, all of the big spots or whatever, and her fun, show is doing really well. Fun fact about her, I actually missed the opportunity to interview her. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> <And> did. <laughs> because when she first, because we had already been friends before she blew up. Uh-huh. And when she first blew up, I asked you, like I had interviewed her, and I asked her, like, yo, you want to interview? You was like, yeah. But see, what happened? But see, that's the thing. So here's what happened, right? Around the time that all that happened, I like just got started. I was barely getting shit together myself. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of the stuff. And I and I share this with my fans because I'm, I'm a very transparent with uh, the listeners of The Noise. Right. When we first got started, we were on our temptations. It was two niggas, one mic. <laughs> you know what I mean? There were no headphones. There were no stands. There was none of that. No condenser mic. It was one uh, audio techno USB mic. With a little pretty little blue light on it. Shoot. Exactly. And that's all we were doing. So I didn't know how to plug in like phone calls. So then when I finally figured out how to plug in phone calls, and you remember this from your first appearance on The Noise, I was like, all right, call me on Skype and then call me on a different phone and put your headphones in. Don't put it on speaker because it was the ghettoest it was thing the most that I've hood ever, set up ever that's the ghettoest interview i've ever ever done but guess what it was goddamn great wasn't it <laughs> it did work and you know what it's it sounded good it sounded too. really good you never thought it was so niggerig <laughs> whatsoever yeah it, it worked i was like oh okay well damn like but, they, but, they figured this thing out exactly okay. but now you know we're official and, th- and thank you again to the listeners that donated we uh when i did the gofundme on my behalf again i don't want to say it's on behalf of beat but uh the, all the listeners and my friends and my supporters they all came through and they made sure that we actually had some equipment to actually give us a competitive edge against other people you know because i didn't want to keep having people calling in and all right so uh you you're so and so so and so you got another phone on you all right what about headphones can you you know what I'm saying? what's the worst experience you've had with that when you had to do it like interview wise dealing with that uh probably when we had carl tart on the show Right. Um, he's actually he's an actor out in California. He was actually one of the writers from uh, the Rehash Mad TV. Oh wow! And he uh, when he came on the show, it was all kind of audio fuck ups, bro. <laughs> like, and you know it was kind of hard to tell when you know when it was working and when it wasn't working. But it would just sometimes 
this, I don't know if it was the signal or just the way that we had a nigga rig, but it would just drop out. It would just drop out. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to hear anything. And I was just like, we got to, we got to do something about this. <laughs> like something, like, something has to happen. <laughs> this can't be life. This can't be life <laughs> at all, at all. But at the time, it was life. Uh, this is what we call humble beginnings. Yes. And you know, you, you see the fruits of your labor, and then you can only go up. Yes, so, sir. You know, yeah. even yes, though sir. I hated it, I felt like such a. Uh, a pirated podcast <laughs> <laughs> but um you know I, I wouldn't trade it for the world because it gives me such a, a wider appreciation for what i have now yeah no doubt no doubt and and real quick before we really jump into everything i also want to send a shout out to my brother b barnes who's getting ready to have some stuff popping on fcb who's also in the building as well that he is so just want to send a shout out so now sir the flu- the studio is mine, but the show is yours. So yes, sir. So floor, this technically man. becomes my studio. <laughs> so now I feel like I can make the rules up in this bitch. And I feel- <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> one thing um, I do want to get into, being that this is uh, kind of an impromptu show, and I apologize that it's coming out two days after. Um, this is the classic CP time, <laughs> uh, but it, you know it was the, it was the transition to get to <laughs> Cleveland. And, of course, the things going on with Kev, you know what I'm saying? We kind of lost lost track, but you guys are still getting the episode. And, of course, you got uh, this Sunday's episode, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to talk about it after we uh, get done with our regular conversation. But uh, So we appreciate you guys sticking in with the noise. One thing I do want to talk about, we'll at least kick this off. Slight conversation. As a man that lives in Las Vegas, did you see that the Raiders are officially making that move? I did. I did. Yeah, uh, let me ask you. How do you feel about that? As Not a, excited. As a Vegas guy. Not excited about it because um, <clears throat> something that's also share on this show. I work on the strip. I work at a hotel. So we are suffering because of that. <laughs> like it's a. Really? Yeah, man. Like taxes are skyrocketing and so, so many different things. And our position is going down and. Like so, that's actually hurting the strip. It's not hurt. No, no, it's, it's actually bettering the strip because we know the fact that they, they've raised the taxes out there to pay for the stadium to pay for all the moves is going to get made. Um, as far as us as employees, we're def- mm. we're taking some cuts. We're not taking pay cuts or nothing like that, but certain stuff that but you're getting hit. We're you're getting hit, hits. right? Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. the the employee appreciation is definitely taking a hit from it. Mm. So we're just trying to maneuver around that. And um, I'm not looking forward to L.A. like traffic in Vegas. Like, that's one of the things that I really like about Vegas, oh, that I can Vegas. hop on the highway, hop off, do what I got to do, be in and out, you know what I'm saying, 20 minutes. Now it's already getting bad because we're inviting so many conventions into the city right. that it's like L.A. traffic. Right. Well, you know, um, from what I've heard, your mayor has been trying to, like, diversify mm-hmm. the, the Vegas economy because I guess they didn't want the economy to be built on – on gambling on just right. gambling no more right because i think he's been attracting conventions he got some other like i think there's a cleveland clinic out there yeah there is it's huge too how there's a cleveland clinic in vegas in so vegas you're right <laughs> it's neither here nor there. i guess it's the same way with it being a casino here yeah <laughs> true 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 but now but cleveland clinic is a little more specific like yeah it is like the cleveland and it looks so weird it's like it's the cleveland clinic of las vegas like no 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 that don't make sense <laughs> <laughs> right right the casino is not like las vegas casino right las cleveland. vegas based casino of cleveland <laughs> <laughs> like that shit doesn't make sense so yeah, so so I get that down. Now as a I know you're a football fan. Yes, sir. Steelers. Would you cheer would you cheer for that team? I will go. I, you wouldn't I, cheer for I, him. I wouldn't cheer for him. Nah, I mean I, I, it, that to me that's kind of fake cuz I live in Vegas but I'm not from Vegas. You know, I'm not, you know, from Pittsburgh either and I guess being born in Cleveland kind of makes me a little a little blasphemous. blasphemous. <laughs> but uh, I, as I remind you very often, especially on social media, <laughs> blasphemous. Whatever. But uh <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't turn I can't turn on the Steelers just because of where I'm living has a team now, you know, because if that's the case, then I would have been a Golden State Warriors fan. Then I would have been a um, uh, an original Oakland Raiders fan. I would have been a, a giant, I mean, a um, 49ers fan, you know what I mean? Out of true, all the places true. I've lived, I've never really been that hometown guy. You know, I'm just like, okay, well, I'm going to go with the team that I bang with. Only time I chose a team that was hometown, you know, that came from hometown consideration was the Lakers. And you suffering right now. Bro, I'm going choice. through it. <laughs> No, I, you know, I was just having this conversation with Kev uh, the other day, too. I'm like, I was going hard for these niggas, especially when we beat the Warriors. I'm like, that's what I'm talking. I wasn't talking shit. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't saying, no, we're about to go to the, to the, you know what I'm saying, to the finals and we're going to take, take it off. But I, I, I was really enjoying the turnaround. And then it was like, oh, wait, y'all the Lakers, right? Oh, let's go ahead and start sucking. Let's go ahead and, and do this. And boy, have they. Now, 
I've heard that they suck it on purpose because if they lose what if they lose the if their pick drops out of the first three, mm-hmm. don't it go to somebody else? Mm-hmm. So they have to suck really bad. But then that makes pick. no fucking sense because if you're sucking on purpose, that means your your personal stock as a player is dropping. So it makes it That's easier true. for it, say it makes it easier for the franchise to be like, okay, we don't need you. And if they want to trade you, again, your stock sucks. So who are you really going to trade for? Who? What team is going to want you? How are you going to convince them? I mean, we was playing like that on purpose. Trust me, I'm a really good player. Like, what? Yeah, because that, <laughs> that could make some people feel some type of way, too. Right, exactly. Now, because, like, you look at, like, Mozgov sitting down. From my understanding, he actually is healthy enough to play if they needed him to play. But I think they just sit in players on purpose because they want to make that. You know, it feels like it. It really does feel like it. <laughs> Man. I you mean, you, to be this to be this bad, they're bad, bro. Now, out now during the Kobe retirement tour, they call it his last season. But um, during that, I can understand if they said they were sucking on purpose because they won like maybe nine or ten games that season, right? Yeah. And that's and they're, that's it's really not even you know over you know drawing it out. I really think we only won like nine or ten games that season. But um, dealing with the Kobe retirement tour, they were they were horrible. They were absolutely horrible. Now, Kobe put up some amazing numbers in his last game, but that's because they went to uh, playbook, you know, saying page number 24, pass the ball to Kobe. Yeah, that's all they did. And Kobe was like, I'm putting up these numbers. I don't give a damn how many shots. I don't care, I right, take. exactly. And he he took all of them. Because then he did, like, how many points? He had, like, 40-something shots or something. Bro, he had crazy. so many shots. So many shots. I can't remember the exact number, but it was unheard of. Like, dude, you're, I understand you're retiring, but. Pass the damn ball. Let's go. Out. <laughs> Let's go out with a W here. And I'm glad we actually went out with a W. Yeah, I watched. I actually watched the game too. Just out. Of- you didn't want to see Golden State break the record. <laughs> You're not a Golden State fan. Get out of here. Hate those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I hate those bastards and everything about them. Now, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say about this, and we'll get back to it. You know, when I when I go to my Lakers, I gotta go. But um, <laughs> I am surprised when we played y'all, and we actually went into the fourth, ten points up. But what's funny. When we got into, when I saw because I, I didn't watch the game because I, I stopped watching these niggas when we go horrible, but um when I when I was watching the game I started watching during the third quarter and I saw we was going into the fourth up ten points I said oh, everybody get blown out by twenty that's the first thing I thought that's everybody get blown out by twenty is I was not surprised that you guys were in the lead and that you kept it close because I've told you this privately and I've said this on my show as well one of the things that drive me nuts about the Cavs is they play when they feel like it right. You know what I mean? Like, they, there's times where you can tell they don't give a damn. It's like you ain't even try to defend that right. shot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I wasn't – I'm never surprised when they lose or bad teams are competitive because a couple of things. Number one, every team in the league plays up to the champs, right? Right, right. Because you want to be able to say you beat the champs. Exactly. You got to play to their caliber that got them there. Right. So, so for 82 games, you're getting everybody's best mm-hmm. every single night. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Number two, the Cavaliers are so good that they're almost too good. They know that they don't have to put the maximum amount of effort, and on most nights they'll be in the game if not win the game. And what I, what I was surprised about going into the fourth, because I thought about that, which is why I didn't text you talking shit. I'm like, no, let me see if we close this out first. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I thought about that, and going into the fourth where I still, I still slightly had hope. Because LeBron was shifting into LeBron mode, and he was struggling. And he, and, and he wasn't struggling because he was having a bad game. He was struggling because the Lakers were actually, you know saying, presenting they a problem. They were up, man. They were up. So I was just like, if we can do this against the champs, against today's Jordan, why are we getting blown out by 30? Because y'all young. Yeah, there's a young team that's, syndrome yeah, for sure. That's, and, 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 well, and that same thing is what pisses me off about my team. Mm. Because they have that same mentality. But it just so happens they're just good enough to get away with it right. on most nights. Right. You know right. what I mean? When they play well, when they give enough of a damn to show up, you there's no there's not a team in the league that can beat them. That's true. That's true. Like I'd I'd be a hater if I if I didn't say that, you know, the Cavs are honestly the best in, in the league right now. Yeah. When they and, show and they, up and they will be. I don't I don't see Cavs having any kind of a decline, not even a dramatic decline at that. I don't I just don't see them having a decline for these next five, six years. Well, and here's the thing, man, and you know me. I'm a big Kyrie Irving fan. Right. And this dude ain't even approaching his prime yet. Mm-hmm. He's young. Mm-hmm. So to see a dude like that who got that that killer instinct, like LeBron don't have that. Right. That's true. 
You know, o- only thing with Kyrie, man, is that he, he sometimes he be showing that Derrick Rose syndrome a little bit. Like sometimes he be showing them, you know, that that glass bone and paper skin. <laughs> he's he's been getting he's gotten a lot better. That's I, true. I That's was true. watching an interview where he was talking about how he knew he had to put more weight on, had mm-hmm. to get a little more solid because he was just frail. Mm-hmm. And people, I think we forget he was nineteen when he came in the league. He right. was still just a kid. Right. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't he wasn't blessed with height and girth like we were. So <laughs> <laughs> my big ass be way too windy running. <laughs> you know, Pass it to LeBron is good. It's good. Go for it, bro. <laughs> hey man, when I played when I played basketball, when I was on the basketball team in junior high, I was of course, what position did I play? Center. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like a, I was just a solid so, ass guest. <laughs> so your job was whoever came down, it be was big. your job. To whip whoever them's ass right. was, and I said I said that exact same thing on the, on, the, on an episode of the noise. Like, if you want me on your team on your basketball team, because I I, I I can move for a big dude. Like right. I, I don't get winded immediately, right? But um, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. I, I'll definitely I'll put up crazy block numbers. I'll put up some. I get some steals. You know what I'm saying. I'm pretty good with the hands, and I'll definitely get some nice assists at that. I'll body a dude down and disrupt the shot all day. But right. I'm going to get four points. <laughs> one of them is going to be an actual shot, and the other one's going to be a foul. Right. <laughs> I'm not too bad at the foul. Line, okay, I was about to say, you're not at, Shaq. At, right? at, yeah, the charity strike, I'm good. <laughs> Even though, you know, Shaq's my favorite player, and he's been pissing me off lately, but that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> but um, the earth is flat. <laughs> I restarted that, man. He did. He started that. <laughs> he did. And so we can't figure <laughs> out, in Cleveland, we can't figure out, like, was he serious? Was he just trolling everybody? You know, I said the same thing about Shaq, and I did the exact same thing I did with Shaq. I checked their social media. I looked for any other interviews. I'm like, these niggas really think the earth is flat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, there's a website you can go see the earth rotate. <laughs> okay, so you got to tell me, like, how did you, what did you look at to see that confirmed your suspicion that they really believed it? All right, so the one thing that pissed me off with Shaq, and he actually deleted it since, but he went on Twitter and was like, yeah, the earth is flat. Like, no, 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 you shouldn't repeat that. That's something you say in the moment, and you just leave it at that. That's not something you should definitely double up on. Like, no, 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 you leave it there. Um, I went to Kyrie's. He didn't say anything about it in general. Like, don't co-sign. You know, when people was asking him about it, he didn't say anything about it in general. It's just, it's just been too much. It's been too much evidence that they truly believe that the earth is flat. And it's just, it's not, it's, it's not looking good. <laughs> I mean... At the end of the day, their job was to play basketball. True. I guess it wasn't to be, True. you know, we're, we're college educated, so we know the earth. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, though? Even when I was younger, before I knew all the basketball terminology, I thought these niggas sounded retarded anyway. Like, every time, they, yeah. you know, you got you to box the man out and, you know, control the paint. And once you get down the paint, you got to, like, what yeah, the fuck are you always, talking about? <laughs> we always talked about that. Like, when I first, and, and you know this, I was originally, like, I, I wrestled in high school. Mm-hmm. I was a WWE fan. Like, I was originally... My sport of choice originally was wrestling. Right. And I got into basketball and stuff later mm. as I got older. And I remember always, I used to tell you, man, like, because we used to, if you watch WWE or any of the other uh, wrestling things, these, most of them, they taught, they're taught how to talk. Mm. Right. So you're used to athletes, so to speak, being able to have complete sentences. Right. <laughs> because part of the part of a wrestler's job is to sell whatever match. Yeah, we had a promo exactly. So when I got into basketball, I'm like, man, these dudes sound dumb as hell. Dumb as hell. Again, that's their whole job. <laughs> man, B Barnes just passed me his phone and sh- and pulled up a link. I forgot that showed me that Shaq earned his doctorate degree. He's Dr. Whoa. Shaq. Now, now, now I, I've known that. I've known that Dr. Shaq I does exist. I forgot about that. Which is probably why they're really getting on him about the Earth being flat. But that. <laughs> That was an honorary doctorate. Oh, so it don't count. Because Kanye has a fucking doctorate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, come on. Like, listen, give us three more years. With you doing FCB, with me doing B, and with, with UTC at that. Oh, about this is my boss for UTC as well, y'all. With us, <laughs> whatever, we're going to get a doctorate. Give us two, three more years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to have a fucking get doctorate. A doctor. I'm one of the dumbest niggas I know. <laughs> <laughs> And they're going to give my big ass a doctor. I can oh, tell you yeah. that right now. Oh, yeah. There's going to be some school when we're even more famous and successful than we are now. Yep, yep. There's going to be some school that we're going to donate money to yep. that's going to give us a doctor. It's going to be Howard University. <laughs> Promise you. Is that, that's the thing? That's what I'm going for, Howard. That's the thing for successful Negroes. That's exactly. Successful you got to buy black. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, since we're already on uh, basketball, and to kind of wrap up the, the initial subject I had with the Raiders, I'm not I'm not looking forward to it. Um, I think it's gonna I, I'll be there when they play the Steelers, but I'm not looking forward to it whatsoever. Do you think that it's gonna work? Because some of the questions that some people have been having is, does Vegas have too much going on? that the fan base isn't really there for sports, almost similar to like Miami. Like the, even when they were in the like the Miami Heat, even mm-hmm. when they were in the finals, they weren't selling out the arena until halfway through the game. The reason it's going to work because, one, Vegas has wanted a team for so long. And quiet as it's kept, there are born and raised Las Vegas people. You know what I'm saying? That's been there, you know what I'm saying, for years. Mm-hmm. And that's been vying for a team for years. So now that we finally have one, and it's a, you know what I'm saying, prestigious – franchise at that like if it was like the Chargers or something like that we we already got one we have the Golden Knights which makes no fucking sense because we're known as the Silver State (laughs) but we have the Golden Knights now right but um they're gonna go because we've been wanting a team for the longest because I remember we initially were supposed to get uh the Chargers and then we were supposed to get uh there was one other team we were supposed to get I can't remember who it was but uh, now that we have the Raiders, you talking about. now that we have the Raiders and we got the Raiders coming off. Well, then again, they said it's going to be like another two, three years before they actually come. Right. But, you know, coming off of this announcement, coming off of a very successful season for them, the, the city's excited. The city is excited. Yeah, because, you know, it was weird because I went and looked up like y'all market. Like everybody, I think everybody thinks of Vegas because you think of big lights, mm-hmm. you know, the city, the casinos and all of that. But y'all market actually isn't that big. Like. Like the Cleveland market is bigger than than Vegas's mm-hmm. market. And I but, didn't know that. It, but like again, it only makes sense to put a team in Vegas. We're the entertainment capital of the world, right? You know what I mean. So it, it, if any place should have a team, it should be Vegas. I think their biggest fear was the betting. It was the gambling. So now, yeah. you, now you got refs, and we're going to, of course, they're going to be home team refs that can possibly sway the game one way or another. That's true. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like that's foreign in sports. So now it, let me ask you before we move on to the next topic. In the next five years, do y'all get an NBA team? And if so, who? I think it'll be the next three years. You think so? Depending on the success of the first. Like I said, they got two more years left in Oakland or however long it takes for them to finish the um, the stadium. And just a little insider knowledge, they're going to be done within that two years. They've already been clearing shit out, getting stuff ready for the longest. Right. This deal has probably been done for some time. Right. This is just the announcement of it. But um, once they see the success and the money, That it brings in because not only do you have in house Las Vegas Raiders fans, which sounds so weird, they need to call like Sin City Raiders. I think that would be a little doper. Yeah, um, because you know, they, you know, the Raiders are known for being, you know, thugs, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Call it what it is. They were in their NWA's team. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I was um, trying to figure out another. Oh, no, you're on the noise, baby. You go and say what you want. (laughs) (laughs) Now, when I get on your show later, I'm going to have to turn down this cussing. I do understand that. (laughs) But um, yeah, like, you know, with it being a Las Vegas-based team, a, a city that's been vying for a team for the longest, they're going to sell out the seats. And then you have the fact that we're one of the biggest places for, for tourism. So now when the tourists come in, some of those tourists are definitely going to be Oakland Raiders fans. So true. they're going to get tickets. True, true. Like because how far like, is Oakland from Vegas? Nine hours driving. Okay, so that's not that far. Yes, it's it is. It's far, <laughs> far enough, but you can make that. You could Yeah, make I've that. made it before. Yeah, yeah I've, made, I've made the trip before, but Because you live far. in Oakland, right? For a little bit, I was in uh, Richmond, and then I was in San Fran for school. Right. Yeah, I can see it being maybe two, three years before we get an NBA team. I don't see it being a uh, an NBA franchise moving over. I can see. You them, think it'd be an expansion? I think it'd be an expansion. I can see them doing um, what they did with the ABA teams back in the day, and just picking cats from certain teams. Now that's where it'll get interesting because who's gonna want to come to Vegas? Because I tell you right now, the Raiders they don't want to come. They've been giving a little bullshit interviews today about it, really? and they do not want – like, they're, they're being as politically correct as possible to not piss off their new fan base. Right. But it's obvious that they do not want to come. Wow. Like, these cats are – and it makes sense because Oakland – Oakland low-key is like Cleveland, even though I know y'all hate the Warriors. But people from Oakland have a pride that, honestly, yeah, I do. understand why y'all beef with Golden State. Because they're very similar, right? Because both are just unmatched, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, So right. the fact that the team is moving – it's, it's horrible. That makes sense. For them, at least. And that shit, I think, uh, I know they were trying to get Marshawn Lynch back, too. And he's like, you know what I'm saying? I want to play for the home team. But if y'all ain't going to be home, then nah. Well, they got, what, two years? Two, three years? Until they said they... until everything's done in Vegas, basically. It but like be... I said, they've been working on this for a minute. So it would be like two years. But you know what? You know what would be the most logical if you were going to have a team to move? 
You know what would be the most logical team? What team? Would be my Clippers to move to, yeah. to Vegas. That would make because that, that's my that West Coast sense. team. I just want to let y'all know I'm not a front runner. I do cheer for the Cavaliers, <laughs> but I have a West Coast team, and it's the Clippers. No, nah, that would make that would actually make a lot of sense because one, get the hell out of L.A. We only need one L.A. team, and that's the Lakers. <laughs> uh, t- <laughs> two, leave Chris Paul because we can use him. Three, <laughs> that would make the most sense because you know, and I've been saying this for a long for the longest. Move them out the Staples Center. Take them, let them go back to the Forum. You know what I'm saying? Send them back to Inglewood. Right. And does anybody use that building? No, nah, it's just there. I think they're actually about to tear it down. Actually, really? Yeah. If I remember correctly, all that, all that history, all that history in today's society, history don't mean shit. Yeah, that's history true. is only like okay, well, this we can always say this was the site that it happened, but now yeah, maybe a Have mega mall, little placards, and exactly. Stuff. You know what I'm saying? A little right. picture of magic right there, right shit. in front of the new freaking steak and shake, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be like a, a little topless little titty bar. And if that's the case, I'm okay with that. <laughs> then you but just salute, you the just salute, you salute and then you throw that dollar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but speaking of basketball, this is actually one of the things I wanted to move on to. So I got a couple things I want to talk to you about now that I have you here. You know what I'm saying? All right. And this is cousin to cousin. This is Darvio and Carlos speaking. Right. Nobody else is here. Like nobody else it's is here. It's just between us. So did it did it hit you that we we have two weeks left in the regular season? Not until I was listening to Sports Talk Radio this morning. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys said that the Cavs had 10 games left. Crazy, right? That shit just like, snuck up. Damn. Now with that. You already know the superlatives are coming out pretty soon. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to speak on all of them. Is 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 two of them I want to speak on, and I want to have, and then I want to ask you a, a question. Okay. Coach of the year. I'm not going through all nine or eight candidates. Where I'm just going to speak on the top four. Okay. Who do you think is walking away with it? And just to give people a little context of what's uh, to who's up. You got Brad Stevens from the Boston Celtics, Pop from the Spurs, uh, Dan Tony from the Rockets, and Scott Brooks from the Washington Wizards. Um, I would argue that either Dan Tony or Brad Stevens should get it. Really? Yeah, I would. And reason, particularly the reason with Dan Tony is, I look at coaches and teams that maximize the talent that they have. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about it, on Houston, they have one superstar, right? right? And then they have a lot of specialist Mm -hmm. players. They have a lot of players that are really good at one thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So for them to be in the position that they're in, looking like, you know, they're going to be a tough out for people in the West. Yeah. You know, I feel like that's that's an argument. And and especially because it largely has a lot to do with Dan Tony's system. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The way that he plays ball, move the ball, score a lot, don't give a damn about defense. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that, that's the Dan Tony way. <laughs> <That's> the, right. <laughs> Which perfectly fits James Harden, who never gives a Who doesn't a damn give about any it. kind of defensive edge whatsoever, whatsoever on the team. Ever. He can't defend us. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm only getting four points. In right. the game. But I, I'm almost positive I'm going to get those four if they got Harden on me. I'm oh, yeah. No four. question. No question. You might. You He's might gonna get my foul shots, too, because, you know, he like to trip niggas when they. <laughs> <laughs> They know, when they're making a run, they're like, oh, they ankle fall grabber, down. You right? know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I, I, I understand that for you sure. Know, so I, I look at him, and I also look at um, Boston, and my argument there is, is kind of similar. They have a good team, but there isn't really a, a superstar there. Mm-hmm. Isaiah Thomas is becoming that, mm-hmm. but he ain't there yet. So right. for them to be only a, a few percentage points behind us mm-hmm. in the East, mm-hmm. and we're full of stars – you know, that says a lot to him. I honestly think if if if, if Brad Stevens doesn't get it, I think it's going to go to Pop. And really? I think it's going to go to Pop because... I know that had to pain you to say that because I know you don't like the team. But no, no, I'm cool with the team now that Duncan is gone. Oh, so that was your <laughs> biggest beat. I hated Tim Duncan. <laughs> oh, my... And I'm going to get to that. Oh, I'm going to get to that. Yeah, because I've never... I've met few people that hate Tim Duncan. All right, I, I, I'll go into the story real quick. I can't remember what year it was, but we was in the Western Conference Finals against the Spurs. And Tim right. Duncan, who looks like a grown-ass 10-year-old, <laughs> he was doing... He was committing so many fouls. And... LeBron level of flopping, you know that nigga flop. LeBron, <laughs> LeBron level of flopping, and every time he get caught up, he had the ref's head like, "What? I fouled him!" And then run the clip back, and he punch a nigga in the jaw. I was like, "Whatever, do you?" I mean? haven't had respect for Tim Duncan since he was born a part of the Twin Towers. Now get that out the way. Now that he's retired, 
you're cool with them. I'm cool with the Spurs, and I'm actually I'm actually a fan of the Spurs, and one and one of the key reasons why I like the Spurs is because of Pop. I think Pop honestly is probably the greatest NBA coach next to Phil Jackson, of course, and that's a very biased opinion, but whatever. <laughs> um, I think he's one of the greatest NBA coaches to you know what I'm saying to pick up the pad because think about it, from David Robinson to Tim Duncan to how he's made Kawhi Leonard the front runner of that team. He, yeah. he he has the recipe to build stars. And I think True. that's what he's been doing. You know, you got a old ass Mono Ginobili. You know, you got a never been too productive Tony Parker still on the team. Kawhi has put that team on his back and they're still seeding for the for the playoffs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even when he had even when Tim Duncan was coming off the bench, he still knew what to do. And he's showing that this season with Kawhi Leonard, because Kawhi Leonard's been a problem. Now, what do you think about this whole controversy with him? that he might have been taking some sort of PED. Then why isn't he bigger? That's, that's that's my main thing always. Like anytime I hear about that, so you I'm, don't buy it. I don't buy it. Cuz again, you know, he he should be bigger. True. It's just I just it, when you're talking about you're on any kind of performance enhancement drugs, you should be bigger. And Kawhi Leonard has always been built like a high school player. That's true. So he should for sure be bigger if that was the case. I think it's just natural talent. It's not like he's never had it. He shut down LeBron in his best years. Back when LeBron was the big muscle body LeBron. Right. You know what I'm saying? Before he got to this slender, dominant form that he's at right now. Right. Back when he Have was the muscle. skill sets. Yes, stuff, exactly. Right. Back when he was the muscular, dominant LeBron, he shut him down. And this was a young Kawhi at that. That is true. You that know what I'm saying? True. So why do you need performance enhancement drugs when you've always been playing at this level of dominance? I really do think it's bullshit. We'll find out soon enough. Yeah, you know, so when the tests come back, you feel me? Yeah. Um... So those are our picks. We'll see what happens in two weeks. So another one, and I'm only going to talk about two candidates because that's I think really deserves it. Who do you think is walking away with MVP? Uh, it depends on how they finish the season. But if it's if I have the pick, I'm giving it to Westbrook. Me too. Yeah. Me too. It depends on how they finish the season, though. But, I mean, they're going to go to the playoffs regardless. Easily, but. right. But um, is it because you don't like James Harden? No, actually, I would, <laughs> and I don't like James Harden. But um, he would be my number a lot two. Of dislike on the noise, right? <laughs> hate, 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 hate. <laughs> right? <laughs> hate, hate, hate. Commercial break. Hate, 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 hate. <laughs> so I don't. I, I mean, I do dislike James Harden, but uh, he would be my number two. Actually, mm. really? Actually. Yeah, he'd be my number two. Hmm. And, again, it goes back to my argument about Coach of the Year. When you do more with less, especially when we, we see we have a squad, we, we're, in, we're in a time of the NBA where there's all of these different uh, super teams, mm -hmm. right? So when you are just one star or one superstar on a team and that team is competitive mm -hmm. and that team performs well, I kind of – I kind of give you a little more credit with that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So you look at Isaiah Thomas, who's another candidate in, in Boston. It's like, yeah, I get it. He puts up flashy numbers, but he has a little more of a complete team. I was about to say, I, and I only think he's a candidate because of the position that they sit in, which is going to be my next conversation, but right. continue. Exactly. You know, he's, the, he has more of a complete team. Mm -hmm. For Westbrook and to a lesser extent Harden, it's really them and the Supremes. Right. It's them and the Pips. Basically. That, that's right. it. You know what I mean? So those are my two. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going with Westbrook um, clearly off of the triple-double numbers. Yeah. Yeah, like, those two. Yeah. Like everybody keeps saying, he's only getting that because he's the main one getting the ball. But you got to think that. about it. His triple-doubles have involved assist. So if, if he's getting the ball all the time, at, at least 20 to 30 of those points are contributed from assist. Uh, of their wins, at least. And then so, losses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and losses, too. So let me ask you this, because I, I had this debate with Germ So True, uh, who hosts the show True to the Game on the network. Shout out, Germ. Shameless plug. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, he would give the MVP. Last we talked about it, he would give it to Kawhi Leonard. Is um, he in your top two? Nah. Um, of everybody that's actually up for it, I, and really, I don't even know why, because at one point, uh, KD was number two for um, at least when it came down to like the um, the bracket. Right. But uh, I don't know, because I, I really I don't have I guess I'll have to steal yours and give it to James Harden for number two. 
But other than that, no one has been pay- no one has been playing to the extent of Russell Westbrook. Right. Like he's been playing like somebody told him when he was younger, you're shit at basketball. He's a beast, <laughs> man. And I just I love dudes with that killer instinct. That's yeah. why, you know, I'm a Cavaliers fan, but it, I'm a bigger Kyrie fan than a LeBron fan. Really? You know I mean? Oh yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've never really been a big LeBron fan. Whew. Uh, I'm a Cleveland has officially just turned their back on you, <laughs> sir. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan of anybody who wears the jersey of the Cavaliers. Right. And LeBron earned my respect back last year when I saw actually two years ago mm-hmm. when he basically took the Warriors to six games with some duct tape, bubble gum, <laughs> and, and, and paper clips. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He earned my respect. And then he earned my respect some more last year when he won the title, and you saw how much it really mattered to him. Right. That he wasn't just talking. Because you know, ain't no grown man, particularly no grown black man, going to cry like that on national TV if it didn't really mean something to him. Yeah, because you know he's about to get called a sensitive nigger for like the next four or five months. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So he earned my respect, so mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, but I'm a Kyrie fan because I like dudes with that killer instinct. I never I always tell you I make fun of the Lakers, but I never really hated the Lakers all like that because I like dudes like Kobe. I like dudes like Jordan. So Westbrook, and that just may be my bias, Westbrook is another one of those guys in that Jordan Kobe mode mm-hmm. of of having that killer instinct, and mm-hmm. I like that. No, he's he's definitely on. Uh, finally, and then we're gonna get off of the NBA, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be quick. So y'all are currently sitting at number two in the East. We are technically number one by five percentage points. By five percentage points. Okay, yes. okay, okay. So y'all are y'all gonna finish out the y'all y'all finish out the season number one? Or are y'all gonna let Boston take that back? I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like, to me personally. <laughs> right, like, I'm not scared of anybody in the East. Mm. You know, Washington makes me a little nervous. But beyond that, I'm not scared of anybody in the East. And I'm really still not scared of, of Washington either. I don't think. the Like, in the East, the seeding only really matters in a seven-game series. And I don't see a team in the, in the East that can take us to seven games. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that either. You know what I mean? So, of course, for prestige purposes, mm-hmm. you'd rather be, if you're the champs, you'd rather be number one. Of course. But people forget the year that we won the championship, we barely got the number one seed. Right. We were only up like two or three on uh, Toronto last right. year. So, you know, they they play a different ball in the playoffs, and it drives me nuts because that's a – it, uh, mature teams don't do that. Mm-hmm. Professional teams don't do that. Professional teams play uh, at the highest level at, every, at almost every single game. Because, you know, not every game. There's not a team in the NBA that puts maximum effort every single game. Oh, yeah, of course. right. You know what I mean? But at most games. Right. You know what I mean? So, but when the playoffs come, the Cavs are going to play a lot differently. So to answer that, that was a long-winded way of answering your question. It They may not, but it doesn't really matter to me either way. True. Do you think y'all going to walk away with the championship again? Depends on who we're playing and who they bring in. Mm. Um, I do believe we'll get there. Oh, yeah, I, I think um, so as well. If it's the Warriors, I think we beat the Warriors, particularly if Kevin Durant isn't playing. I think y'all beat the Warriors even if he is playing. Really? And the only reason I say that is because going off of their play as of recent, while he's been gone, they're back to that machine. It didn't seem like it was gelling as well. It just looked like an all-star game. You know what I mean? You know how little effort is put into an all-star game. Right. It was looking like an all-star game. Now, granted, Durant was putting up points. Don't get me wrong. But it's just a matter of fact, and we had this conversation when we found out he was going over there, who's going to take less minutes? Who's going to take the least amount of minutes to let Durant touch the ball more? Mm-hmm. I think it was Klay Thompson. Yep. And now that Klay Thompson is back in that, you know, he, he's getting his minutes back, he's been torching. And he's been torching on some Clay Thompson shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I think the thing about the Warriors, the reason why the Cavaliers tend to be a bad matchup for them is the Warriors don't respond well to physicality. Mm. If you want to have a shot to beat the Warriors, you have to beat them up. Right. They don't. They're 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 light in the butt, so to speak. Mm. You know what I mean? They're they're, they're I'm not gonna call them soft, but they're they're kind of you know. Whatever word you want to use. To That's s- not soft. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So 
they that's the way if they get out an early lead and can shoot you out the gym, they're gonna win. Right. But if you slow the game down and beat them up. You have a, a, a and you have the talent to match. Mm. You have a good chance of beating them, and that's what the Cavaliers does. Now, the thing that they do miss with Durant is Durant upped their defensive intensity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So by him not being there, that defensive intensity goes away. It's just the thing about it is there are there aren't many teams in the league that have enough talent to just keep up with them. Right. You know the Warriors are kind of almost like the Cavs in that sense where uh, they, they put more effort most of the time than the Cavaliers do in, in, on any given night. But the Warriors are so talented that they never have to put maximum effort on most nights. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But then you saw what happened Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. Cavaliers still beat their ass. Right. Even with a healthy Durant. With a healthy Durant, right. That show you that the Cavaliers just, I think the Cavaliers just have the, they got the winning That's the mojo. Thing. Durant has never had an answer to LeBron. No. Never. Even when he was in Miami. He never had an answer. No. So if we if we play the Warriors, I like our chances against anybody because the Cavaliers are that good. But if if you're gonna ask me to pick, if we're playing against the Warriors, particularly without Durant, I feel like we have a higher shot of winning. I feel like we can beat the Warriors regardless. The team that I am worried about are the Spurs. Yeah. I could see that. I can see that for sure. I think we could beat them. I was about to say, I could, I could see y'all beating them. But, but I'm worried about them. But it, it, it's because of that because now I, I see y'all beating them, but I'm going to be completely honest with you. I don't see LeBron being productive in that in that seven. I think he's going to go seven. I don't see him being productive oh, in yeah, that seven no game question. series. No question. Just because seven. Kawhi has his number. Well, and see, that's <laughs> the, the, the thing about it. That's the thing that concerns me about playing them and – because what I just said to beat the Warriors is the exact opposite mm-hmm. of how to beat the Spurs. Exactly. That's fundamentals. One. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Be- because they, if you get physical with them, they like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can't, ain't much you can, you can do with that. Exactly. You put a body on him like, okay, you want to send me to the line? Let's go ahead. Oh, never mind. That's an and one. Never mind. I'll take that. Right. They like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so getting off of basketball, because, you know, my Lakers are – I think they were like 18th, 19th seed, 22nd, 30th, one of those. I know that hurts your soul. It does. Um, <laughs> but, you know, green pastures are to come. Um, you wanted to talk about uh, Tommy Loren. Now, yes, I see that she was recently indefinitely suspended. Well, they said permanently, didn't they? It's permanently now. Yeah. So um, what's going on she with that? She was let go from the blaze. So, uh, basically, and forgive me, y'all, I have a piece of chip on the side of my mouth. I didn't know he was going to go directly to me. I thought I had a chance to kind of get rid of that real quick. No, you were all like, I want to talk about that. And I'm like, all right, well, it's a big niggas. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they should expect <laughs> us to be eating, drinking milkshakes the whole night. It's good, trust me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, basically, I'll, I'll go from the beginning and then I'll go up to now. Tommy Loren from... From my sources inside of the blaze, as well as public reports that's been out, Tommy Loren has always been a problem for the blaze. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, Glenn Beck, the uh, conservative talk show host, is the owner of the blaze, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of things that she has said that he's been uncomfortable with. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem had been, from my understanding, and this is inside information, the problem had been she has a contract. And they couldn't just up and fire her. Right. Um, they were forced. They were stuck with her, basically. Mm. So she goes on uh, The View, I believe, either last week or the week before. I think it was last week. Yeah. the Last week she went on The View. And she talked about herself being pro-choice. And that wasn't really the biggest issue. The biggest issue was that she either said or insinuated that women who are, who are conservative but who are not pro-choice are hypocrites. Well, you just insulted the majority of, of the audience of the network that pays you. Mm. So that'll do it. If you want to get I away. I think so. 
If you want to get away, that would be like coming on Beat or FCB and talking negatively about black people. That's a good way to I know, get that get you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Live on mic. Like, you, you ever heard somebody get their ass with me? <laughs> it's about to be the first time. You're like, about to, I'm going to need somebody to call this like a, like a Muhammad Ali fight back in the day. <laughs> like on, on black-owned networks, that's probably not the best probably idea. That's the smartest thing to do. Right. You know, so it's the same thing here. Uh, because Glenn has had people on staff before who are pro-choice, so it's not so it has nothing to do with her being pro-choice. It's the fact that you insulted your your, your own audience. audience, right? Exactly. So he had to take action, mm-hmm. and she ended up getting suspended, and now she's suspended indefinitely because her contract is up in September. So he was mm-hmm. just like, "Well, forget it. I just ain't gonna bring you back on the air." Here's the thing about political media. Mm-hmm. All right, political media is a little different than regular media than the stuff that we're that we're doing right now or the stuff that I that I do the majority of the time on my show. Mm-hmm. Political media is you are managing an audience that really only wants to hear you agree with what what they think. With what they think. Mm-hmm. So Glenn Beck is a perfect example. Glenn Beck is one of the most prominent conservatives, prominent quote unquote Republicans, who was anti Trump. Mm-hmm. And it's hurt his business as a mm-hmm. result. So his show went from the second largest in the country to like fifth. And he's lost millions of traffic to the Blaze website. Now, with that, before you continue your point, yeah. there's a lot of hypocrisy in that sentence alone. Because how, and, and I'm not, and I do know that, that there are a bunch of Republicans that were against Trump. I know there's a shit ton of Republicans that were against Trump. Right. But as a Republican, quote unquote, and following the ideals of your party and who your party elected, and you're publicly against him. Why are you going to fire somebody who basically kind of just shared the same ideas you had towards the current president? Because what happened is she now and Tommy flip flopped on Trump. She right. was not she was not pro Trump and then became pro Trump. Mm-hmm. I would argue that it was because she saw the money that was involved in being pro Trump. Right. So anytime, like whether you're a female, you're a young female or you're black or whoever, or you're gay, whatever. If you fit any of those boxes and you're really pro-Trump, you're going to get attention like that. That quick, yeah. You know what I mean? You're going to get attention. You're going to get money because you're the other. Right. You stand out. Right. And they get to point at you like, look, here's my Negro. Look, <laughs> here's here's my young woman. Mm. Look, here's my gay friend. You know what I'm here's saying? all the people you say hate me, but they're right here. <laughs> exactly. That, you know, and, and you, you get attention that way. So mm. she did that. But now when she did the, the – when she insulted their audience – it kind of boxed it back back into a corner mm-hmm. because once again, here's a guy who's already taken a hit mm-hmm. from his conservative audience because he won't go along with Trump. Mm-hmm. So he's like, if I leave her on the air, even though she's one of the most popular people for some ungodly reason on his network, mm-hmm. he's like, if I leave her on the air, I'm going to take another hit. Right. Because the conservative folks that I still got, she just insulted them now. Mm. You know what I mean? So she kind of, she put her foot in her mouth because let's, let's be real. Let's be 100. And I'm not trying to, to denigrate an entire audience because not everybody feels this way. But there's a lot of people in that target audience who are not going to be offended by the things she said about Black Lives Matter. Right. Of course. Right. There's a lot of people who are not going to be offended by some of the other kooky, crazy, race-related things that she said. Mm-hmm. I mean, because if we're going to be honest, that's how she started to get attention in the first place. Right. You know what I mean? But when you insult your own audience, <laughs> you're almost always going to have problems. Of course, naturally. I mean, I, like if you insult your audience, you're going to see how low your numbers drop the next week. She should have been let go a long time ago. A long time ago. But I get why she had to be let go now, because this was almost from from what I from my understanding and what I'm being told, this is like the straw that broke the camel's back. It was like, okay, that's enough. We can't do it no more. Now, as um, one of the people we've grown up watching, uh, Mr. Eric Bischoff has once said, "Controversy creates cash." How long do you think it'll take for Fox to pick her up? Soon as she's available. <laughs> I mean, let's just let's keep it one hundred because she's hot and she's young mm-hmm. and she's blonde mm-hmm. and she has she has a following. She has an audience. She has a huge following. 
And because think about it. And, and apparently I, she pops her pussy as well. I don't know how relevant it is to that. <laughs> well, no, Bill O'Reilly would like that. He'll definitely <laughs> fuck with that. So I think I, I mentioned this the last time that it was on the show. The fact that we even know who she is is a testament to how good she was at what she does. Mm. Because the Blaze is a pay network. Like, mm. you have to pay. It's like a Showtime or something. Right. You have to pay. It's not a free network, so I can't just turn to the Blaze right now mm. and watch. So we have no exposure unless we're subscribers. The fact that we know her. Yeah, speaks volumes. Speaks volumes for what she's been able to do. Mm. You know what I mean? So, And she is talented in that regard. And when you say bombastic stuff. You're going to get a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. You know There's a lot I mean? of black people that listen to this show right now. I thought it was always boom because of um, <laughs> Shaggy back <laughs> in the day. Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's that's going to happen. And and there's a there's a lot of people that there's an audience for that. There's mm-hmm. a market for that. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I mean, if you guys want uh, to hear people talk about politics in in a reasonable smart, non-stupid way, make sure you listen to The Political Refugee with Mary Beth Glenn on the FCB Radio Network. So, you know, so that's the thing. It's, it, <laughs> I'll put it like this. When you have people like Tommy, when you have people like Milo, the dude who got in trouble for saying, the big conservative Breitbart guy who mm-hmm. lost his job because he a okayed uh, men having sex with boys. On an interview. That is not funny. What the (laughs) fuck? (laughs) Like, you didn't know about that, right? Honestly, I didn't. (laughs) (laughs) So. (laughs) Story time. Yeah, let me get ready here. (laughs) So Milo, Milo Yiannopoulos is another guy who was in the vein of a Tommy Loren. Mm -hmm. He's a guy who was young, flamboyantly gay. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. overtly Purse wearing, when I met, because I, I met him once before, when I mm-hmm. met him, he had a purse. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that type dude. And he, he played that up on purpose because mm-hmm. once again, and he was a Trump guy. So once again, you're going to get a bunch of attention when you How? do stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was really weird. He used to refer to Trump as his daddy, and I don't even want to go there. <laughs> like it just, it, that whole thing made me uncomfortable. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to go there. But so he got a lot of attention because he just said outlandish stuff, mm-hmm. right? He said a bunch of outrageous, outlandish things to get attention. And people gravitated towards him because of that. Mm-hmm. And didn't matter what he said, didn't matter what he did, they rode with him. He actually had a book deal. He had a book deal oh, that was a quarter, okay. at least a quarter of a million dollars. Okay, I remember because I remember when he got the book deal, and then when he made the comment, they snatched it back. Right, exactly. Okay, I remember doing yes, that. Yes, that yeah, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, okay, okay. So then it comes out that he was, oh, wow, pause. Then it's released. <laughs> <laughs> but dumb, <Pause>. Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> then we find out about, there we go. <laughs> then we find out about. Um, this interview, this podcast that he had, um, I, I believe he said it on Joe Rogan's podcast. He might have said it on another on another podcast as well, talking about uh, that you know basically co-signing men having sex with boys, and he said that he was molested. And he said, well, he cracked a joke. Well, in his words, he cracked a joke saying, well, the one thing that father, whatever the guy, the, the priest's name was, the one thing that, it was, that was good about that was that he taught me how to give good head. And I think he only said it was a joke after it came out. I think he meant that. Probably. <laughs> so then he, came, he comes crashing down. So now you have the Tommy Loren situation. She comes crashing down until she gets hired by Fox. Yeah, right. So, I mean, at some point, When do you stop and look at people and say, okay, let me see if you really know what the hell you're talking about Mm. or if you're just saying stuff to make me angry? It's like we live in this clickbait culture. Mm. And Tommy Loren, Milo, and even to some extent the president is a part of that. Some extent. (laughs) (laughs) Right. We have a, a Stephen A. Smith said we have a, tw- a Twitter troll as president. Yes. So, <laughs> That's exactly what we have. So this this whole clickbait reality TV culture is going to lead to stuff like that. Lead to people who get shot up mm-hmm. in, in like they fly up and everybody knows about them. This meteoric rise. And then 
they say something stupid or they do something stupid or you find out they really don't know what the hell they're talking about and then they then they become, become president. president. <laughs> <laughs> it's normally how I go they become president afterwards. So, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. but that's so that's that's the whole thing. Like people like Tommy, people like Milo, they're they're a product of this whole reality. Is that you pronounce your name, Tommy? Yes. It's supposed to be Tommy? Tommy Loren. Oh. I'll tell you a, a perfect example, and I know you want to move on, but a perfect example of of what I'm talking about. I covered um my my show, we cover CPAC mm-hmm. in D.C. I saw that. Which mm-hmm. is, for those who don't know, it's the Conservative Political Action Conference. So a lot of famous political people come or whatever. And, you know, the vice president was there. The president was there. Um, and so we went there to go do interviews. Mm-hmm. And we're on Media Row. And we see a bunch of guys walk, a bunch of black dudes walk, come up to Media Row with this big sign that says Blacks for Trump 2020. Mm. Right? Now they come in, they look like the most hoodest guys that you've ever seen in your life. You know that one raggedy white t shirt that your uncle used, that your <laughs> uncle wear when he's using the grill? Mm-hmm. Or fixing some shit. Right. Uh-huh. They all had that. They all had these long white tees that look like I could tell what you ate today. You know what I'm saying? They were fresh all... out of Franchise Boys video. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? They had on like. Remember them, uh, them phone cases that people used to, the small phone cases that people used to wear on their on they belts back when that was cool? Mm, they still do that, by the way. <laughs> it still happens. <laughs> they, they had that, and, and it was like, the, I'm not talking about the big cases to fit a smartphone. It was like small cases. For like, to, a, for like a razor or something. Right, shit. right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they had all of that, and they, and they come in, and they got these signs and all of this stuff. And immediately they start, cameras started going to them. People started going to them, taking pictures with them, getting autographs. Nobody knows these fools. Mm-hmm. But they immediately, they know exactly what to do. And I was sitting there and I'm watching this. And somebody asked me, you want to talk to them? I'm like, hell no. Because I know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You playing the game. Mm-hmm. Right? Because why else? If you was really here for Trump, if you was really here to, to hear the speakers or whatever, why are you in media row? Right. You come to Media Row specifically because you know you're going to get a bunch of attention Mm -hmm. because you're a bunch of Negroes. You're going to be on somebody's show. Exactly. Because you're a bunch of Negroes that look like like car mechanics Mm -hmm. holding blacks for Trump signs. That realistically wouldn't be voting for Trump. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So they, they play that whole thing up. You know what I'm saying? So that I saw that a lot um, when I was at CPAC. And I think that's just that's part of the culture. That's this reality TV culture that we live in. Yeah. yeah unfortunately. But again, uh, just kind of wrap this up. Sucks that she lost her job, but she's going to be working again. Oh, real yeah. Soon. And she'll be working on even a bigger network that everybody gets for free. Yep. So, and she'll be extra famous and she'll be a millionaire. Even, with even more year. famous until that sex tape drop. <laughs> well, all the shit she was talking on Twitter, no. she got a sex tape. I don't know. If, I don't know if she has has a sex tape, but I have heard some things about her past that I am not at liberty to discuss. So why bring it up? You gonna tell me off the air? <laughs> you laughing? You gonna right. tell me off the we'll, air? We'll, yeah, we'll talk about my it. nigga. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> uh, so final thing, just kind of wrap this all up. <clears throat> Before I even say anything, Danielle Brigoli. How about that? So you know who this woman is. So Danielle Brigoli is the 14-year-old Cash Me Outside girl from the Dr. Phil episode. Who I swear is going to end up pregnant at, at like 16. If she hasn't already been at 13. <laughs> um, so we know with all of her antics and all of her, I guess, quote, ghetto talk and acting black, this has landed her a reality show. And I know it's been words saying, okay, she doesn't have one just yet. But let me break down exactly what's going on. The producers have been shopping this reality show that really doesn't have a concept just yet that they said. No, they been, just want her on TV. They just want her on TV. So they've been shopping this reality show. They shopped it to seven different networks. Of the seven, four won it. That's blasphemous. 60% of the networks that you shop to want a show about a ghetto white girl. Who isn't really ghetto because her mom was like really country corn fed. <laughs> so it was like, where like where are you getting this hood from other than BET back in the that you're too young to be a part of that BET at that? Let me yeah, say right. that. You don't remember that. You're only that, 14. You don't remember the hood BET. Right. You don't remember BET uncut. <laughs> exactly. You don't remember none of that. You, you weren't watching Teen Summit. <laughs> you feel me? So it's like, where is this personality coming from? 
that you that you've just created this persona that everybody's just fucking loving. And this is all and just remind y'all, this is all based off of somebody remixing her interview and and making it into a song. The interview was old viral. already. It was old as hell. Yeah. She was like twelve, I think they said. Right, right, it, uh, man. What's crazy is. We got in this business over 10 years ago. It'll be 11 in June, Mm -hmm. right? It took me that long to build this. It took us that long to build UTC. And here come this heifer Mm -hmm. within six, seven months. And she got a reality show. Maybe we're not ignorant enough. Now, nah, you know what's funny? We are ignorant enough. And actually, it's a lot of black folks out there that are ignorant enough to actually have their own show. The only thing is, it's expected and it's frowned upon when we do it. Correct. So now that you have this little white girl who come from a, a country cousin fucking family, and um, you caught that? <laughs> He just threw me off. <laughs> but uh, you, you got this little white girl, and she's quote unquote acting black. And now all of a sudden, this shit is cool. This shit is funny. Like every time I see, you know what I'm saying, a white girl do something like that, or a white boy, any anybody outside of the black race, I always think about um, Malibu's Most Wanted. Like it looks forced, it looks learned, and it looks over exaggerated. Because like, you, like, you, you look at her, and black people are like, we don't even act like that. We don't do that, right. And it, and if we do do that, it's in like the heart of the hood. Like this is where they mold and breed gangsters from. You know right, what I'm saying? Exactly. And and nine times out of ten, now granted, there are a lot of places that are like that 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 a lot of uh, black folks do come from. But as far as the majority, the ones that are actually being seen, we don't fucking act like that. Nah. You know what no, I mean? We like, don't act like, that. like it's one of the things where the minority is speaking for the majority. Right. Well, and and once again, going back, like I I feel like this whole conversation is all connected. Like, going back to Tommy, going back to, to Milo, and now this chick. The unexpected mm-hmm. and the outlandish stands out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So why does why did Tommy stand out? Because she's hot, and she's young, and she's blind, and she's pro-Trump. Right? Mm-hmm. Why did Milo stand out? Because he's young, and he's gay, and he's pro-Trump. Mm-hmm. Right? Why does this chick stand out? Because she's young, and she's white, and she's ignorant as hell. She's and, her cousin's son. <laughs> Daughter. Right. Maybe son. Who knows? It's 2017. It could be son. It could be son. Right. <laughs> and, and so she stands out because I feel like, oh, how can I say this and not get in trouble? It's the noise. Trust me. You, you, everybody gets in trouble. You're probably, on, <laughs> you're probably in trouble just for being on the show. I'm saying that right now. <laughs> um, there are a lot of people. I'm not going to say this about everybody. It's, it's not everybody. But there are a lot of people who are Caucasian who like the idea of being black. Without but, actually being black, honestly, how you would have gotten in trouble for that? It's cultural appropriation one on one, of course. Like that's actually that was gonna be my 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 next thing I was gonna talk about. Like it's cool to be black until it's time, time to, to be, be black. black. You know what I'm saying? Like I've looked I've looked at it. Like remember when everything was really starting to really take off when it comes down to black people? And by take off, I mean random ass murders of black people. Yeah. Everybody was like, so where are all these white rap artists that ain't saying shit? And that's one thing I actually respect him and them for because he stood up once once Trump got in office. It was like even though once Trump started running, it was just like, all right, this is too fucking much. Now you have a medium to reach these, you know, what I'm saying these, these white people that um, that feel differently. You have a medium to reach these white people that think that black, that all these blacks are being killed because of the black people. You right. know what I'm saying? With him doing that. To me, was brilliant. Got more credibility. No, exactly, because no one's gonna give a fuck on your interview. They're just gonna not listen. Like no one's, no one, no, no white person actually knows. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? No, they don't listen to Hot Nine Seven anyway. So who gives a fuck about what Macklemore is saying on Hot Nine Seven? But they listen to Eminem. Right. Eminem got a new track. Let me hear that. He could have, he could have changed your mind, or he could have pissed you off. But you still heard it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, and you know how I feel. I'm not, I'm not one to use that cultural appropriation term loosely. Mm-hmm. But you know how I feel about Macklemore. Right. I feel like he's a he's a rap interloper. He's oh, yeah. Not, Easy. He ain't one of us. Easy. He's in that same boat as Iggy and Oz. He's in the same boat as Cash Me Outside. Right. Because, again, when you look at her, when you look at her family, when you look at her upbringing, where do you learn this kind of, you know what I'm saying, it's, where do you it, learn it, these actions? I agree. Like what you said earlier, it looks like an act. It's an act. Right. It's nothing short of an act. Because I know a lot of ghetto people, and I know you do, too. <laughs> Tons. Tons. We have, we have a few in our family. Right, yeah. Just left some of these niggas, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? And they don't act like that. At all. 
you move like how your environment more so in a sense shapes. Oh, to catch me outside, girl. She act like trash. She acts like trash. Oh yeah, of she course. Act like she act, but but yeah, she, she needs to like be trash. again one on the cousin fucker side trash. I don't know <laughs> where this where, where this quote unquote black woman is coming from that everybody's giving her so much credit for. And then when she gets this dumbass reality show, what the hell is it going to be about? Her acting ignorant. Her, doing ignorant stuff. It's, it's like I, she got into a fight on the plane at the right time. Because if she didn't get into that fight, I don't think this would be going on. And she's what, 14 years old? 14. I feel like this. And once again, I always get myself in trouble when I come on your show. <laughs> but Hey, it's cool. <laughs> I feel like every black woman, every Hispanic woman who's lived that life, and every genuine white person mm-hmm. who's, who's from the hood right. should be pissed at this. Of course. Because it's like, that's how you think we act? Right. If you think... If her, if she thinks her behavior is what it means to act black, we got a lot of work to do. Right, it's, that's a racist insult. If there ever was one. Right, exactly. And, right and, and you know what? And it's not even just her because she'll never come out and say that she's acting black. She'll no. say this is who she is. Right. But it's the spectators, it's the motherfuckers outside looking in is going to say, "Oh, she's acting black," and I guarantee she got this show because she's acting black. Like that's an insult. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying, man. Like we're from the hood. We don't act like that. At all. Our Niggas from our hood that don't act like that. Exactly. <laughs> our people don't act like that. A lot of our family from the hood, they don't act like that. That's, right. That's not real life for most black people. Right. But now that now that it's considered acting black is going to get all the attention. Now, shows like, you know, um, Real Housewives and Love and Hip Hop, they aren't helping. No, Say that right not. now. But they're you not. know the difference? To be fair. But you, you know the difference? And it's probably the only time you ever hear me defend any of those kind of shows. The only difference is you see those women making money. They True. have businesses. True. You know True. what I'm saying? They're doing something. True. They're not just on camera acting black quotation mark. Right. And this chick is 14. There's she's nothing. 14. What can she do? And the only thing she's famous for is catch me outside. How about that? And right. fighting somebody on a plane and fucking her cousin. You know, <laughs> Are We're, you that, sure that's, about that? I'm pretty sure about that. <laughs> There's a sex tape coming. <laughs> it's called, it's called all in the family. <laughs> You ready for it? <laughs> hell no. That's illegal <laughs> as hell. It's illegal as hell, but guess what's going to come out? You How about what, that? You know what creeped me out? <laughs> like, for some reason, I like, I'm like i a I'm a, I'm a masochist, and sometimes I read the comments on Facebook posts. It's fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I read some of, the, some of the things that these thirsty-ass dudes were saying on the posts about... Danielle Bagroli talking about how hot she was and talking about her chest and stuff. I'm like, she's 14. She's not even, she's not even a technical teenager just yet. Right. <laughs> like, you nasty, dirty sons of bitches. Right. It's, and, and, and that's one thing that does kill me, too. It's like when you see stuff like that, it makes you wonder, why, why do y'all exist? Like, what pleasure are y'all getting out of fantasizing over a 14-year-old wannabe black girl? But you know what? Let's keep it, let's keep it one, all the way 100. I, I guarantee you they'll never admit it because they know it would be illegal if they did. But a lot of the dudes who would watch her show would watch her because they're attracted to her, <sighs> which is disgusting. Which and ma- illegal makes sense. Going back to the cousin fuckers. <laughs> I, I, I feel like they are all cut from the same cloth. Is that going to be the name of the show? <laughs> cousin fuckers. <laughs> nope, we can't do that. You want to know why? We're cousins. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a bad look. Don't want nobody to get the wrong guy. As soon as you see the episode, cousin fuck is like, whoa. It's like pause. In the kingpin, Big Los' cousin. Yeah. Nah, so no, this this won't be called that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just that that trippy out right Oh man. <laughs> but no, but yeah, but you see, she has a, a, a specific audience. You know what I'm saying? She has the people that want to appropriate black culture as an audience. She has white people who think black people acting like that is funny kind of audience. Yeah. They yeah. have these yeah. statutory rapist audience. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, she's, it, that's the saddest thing about it is because that is a pretty big number yeah. of oh, yeah, people. No doubt. And they're going to watch that. And she's going to get ratings. And because there's no reality to reality shows, they're going to put her in all the perfect situations. That's going to keep that show rolling. Doesn't it trip you out? Like, because we trained in this, right? Mm-hmm. Like we went to school for this shit. We went to school for this. Like, doesn't it trip you out when you see people who really believe that a lot of that stuff they see on TV is real and they're oh, yeah. really caught up in it? Like, oh yeah, for real. Oh, Don't yeah. that trip you out? I've, I've broken a lot of hearts telling them about, pe- telling people about their favorite shows. <laughs> a lot of hearts. Man, my um, my 
professor in television, his first day, um, my first day in his class, he said, the first thing that he said to everybody was, I'm going to ruin television for you forever. You know, it's funny. My professor actually said the exact same thing in my in my um, advanced production class when I was going when I was uh, going to grad school in Frisco. First day he walked in, he said, "So I don't know if you guys have girlfriends, you guys have wives, uh, boyfriends, whatever the case may be. Don't watch TV with them because you're going to completely ruin it for them from here on out." <laughs> and I never understood that. But then after I got done with the class, I'm like, I can't help but to analyze TV shows and yep. shit when I see them now. And you know what else helped me you know figure out? Sauces, man. Exactly. You know what else kind of jacked me up when it comes down to uh, reality shows? What? We had a class called Making a Reality Show. Oh, wow. So you know, so you I know, know how they do exactly. it. Exactly. I know all the inner workings. And, and one thing that he actually said that I never truly thought about is he said, tell me this. How long can you fight in a club before security, before the crowd and security swarms you? I was like, Five two, seconds. Like two, three seconds. Two, three yeah. seconds, five seconds max. Yeah, yeah. Why well, loving hip hop? They fighting for five minutes before, and they have all of this circle of space, and then two security guards who, if you've been to that club, that's not how they security dress. Two security guards breaking it up. And ain't nobody, only one person getting thrown out, and that's the villain, quote unquote, of the situation. <laughs> right, come on. Like, that's, that's neither here nor there, but I say that to say this they're going to put her in all the right positions to make a successful show, and it's sad. It's sad. And you know what's really sad about it is nobody seems to give a damn about the kid. Nope. She's still a kid. Exactly. And they're going to ruin her life. Because she's not going to be able to, What's she going to do after? Because it's going to fail. It's going to eventually fall off. Right. It's not going to be. She's not going to go into Once she's old enough to make conscious decisions, no one's going to care anymore. It's going to fall off. So then what happens after that? You just spent all this time being hood. Everybody knows you smoke weed, so nobody's going to hire you. Everybody know that you that, that you're ratchet in your ghetto, so no one's gonna really want to be around you like that, except like minded people, until your celebrity falls off, and then they're not gonna be around you. Right, because what does she do after the show ends to keep her celebrity going? Exactly, A sex tape. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man! It's it's scary times, as me and Kev always say. Yes, I, yes, absolutely. Did he say where did he say he was gonna move to? He was looking at the Bahamas. Yeah, the Bahamas and the, uh, the Caribbeans and all that. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, it's, you know, it's, it's, that, it's that time to make that move, bro. It's definitely that time to make that move because America has been on some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's been, America's been trippy before, but it's like social media and Trump, I'm going to blame him for everything. <laughs> right. America, the last few months, it's been like, you ever know that one time where you got really, really drunk? Mm. And you wake up the next morning and you have no recollection of what just happened. Ha, college. <laughs> <laughs> That's where America's at now. That's Everybody's true. starting to wake up and be like, damn, what the hell did I do last Dude, night? It's like I've always been saying, America is the world's reality show. This is love and politics. Ha, I like that. It, yeah. I like that. that I might steal that. I'm you can't. You know. It's a shirt coming. It's ours. It's, it's a property <laughs> of Beat Network. <laughs> I'm a bootleg your stuff. <laughs> You're just going to misspell it just for the. <laughs> like, right. Look, it's different. Politics with a Z. <laughs> exactly. Politics. <laughs> Kingpin, man. Tell me where they can find you at, bro. All right. You can find me on Twitter at. Uh, what is it? D to Kingpin. Uh -huh. You can find me on Instagram at D to Kingpin. Uh, Facebook at Facebook.com slash Darvio. Make sure you go to FCBRadioNet.com for the Outlaws and a list of all of our other shows that you can hear right there on the website. Make sure you hit them up. Um, troll them. Troll me if you have to. He likes trolls. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. Uh, at Big Loves UTC on Twitter. Real um, quick, I want to send a shout out to everybody at Beat. Uh, send a shout out to my boy Jay. Homie Jules, you know what I'm saying? Send a shout out to Hollywood Kev. Yes, sir. You know, keep doing y'all thing. Yes, sir. Shout out to Lex Love and, and Truth as well. Bro. Like yes, chocolate. yes, definitely <laughs> shout out to him. What's going on, y'all? <laughs> uh, as I was saying, at Big Los UTC on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Facebook as well, Carlos Lowe Sampson. Follow me. Don't add me. Um, <laughs> you don't forget. And you, actually, you can like the uh, Beat Network Instagram page now. It's just uh, Instagram.com slash Beat Network. You can find you can like the Facebook page, Facebook.com slash Beat Network 1. Um, you can follow the Beat Network Twitter page, Beat underscore Network. Don't forget to go to the Beat Network website where you can actually find everything I just mentioned, BeatNetworkOnline.com. 
uh, you pre-order Cousin Fuckers. Apparently, it's going to be on Amazon <laughs> um, about a week or so, um, courtesy of Vivid Video. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this, uh, this has been a fun show, man. I appreciate you stepping in um, on Kev's behalf, bro. No doubt, no doubt. Appreciate now, you letting me use your facilities at that. I just have one request. Yes, sir. I want to be able to, like, I always want to do this. I want to be able to do the outro with you. Like, you know how you say this thing, and <laughs> you then you bounce to the other thing. Like, I want to do that. Like, I heard that, and I was like, that's really cool. Right. Like, I want to do that. All right, so I guess we got to get to it. So um, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me set it up. As always, we appreciate you guys listening and tuning in. As always, we appreciate you guys uh, supporting us and keeping up with us. And as always, it's Big Los. The Kingpin filling in for Hollywood Kev. It's the noise. Silly. <laughs>